Airbnb wants you to be a host. As the ancient Greeks said, be aware of strangers bearing gifts. In this episode, Mike Riley and Mike Ferrante discuss the pros and cons of short-term rentals and should you be putting all your eggs in the Airbnb basket. They also discuss hiring a consultant to guide you through the maze of short-term rentals. Yes, kind of an infomercial, but worth listening to. Stay tuned for the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Mike Riley on our Thanksgiving edition of the Cleveland Real Estate Investor. And once again, my my partner uh, in real estate ventures, Mike Ferrante. Mike, good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. And uh, as we always do, the cap, the uh, caffeinated level for you currently? Uh, just a couple sips of my first soy cappuccino of the day. Okay. <laughs> I remember uh for those of a certain age uh, a group called Fire Firesign Theater and there was a uh this is back in the 70s and they did I guess some uh, Lone Ranger was with uh Tonto and Tonto gave him some peyote and uh in about one about 30 seconds <laughs> The Lone Ranger had a reaction to it, and he said something like, Ooh, "Which way did they go?" <laughs> so I'm waiting Definitely. for that. I'm waiting for that caffeine to to take effect with you, Mike. <laughs> You're definitely dating yourself with that one. That's before my time. I know, way before your time. But we're not going to get into uh, my all time favorite comedy album, which was Richard Pryor's Craps, but that's uh, that's X rated. So, yeah. Um, anyways. So it's uh, the Thanksgiving. It's Saturday here. It's a beautiful sunny day in Cleveland. We had a great Thanksgiving weather, uh, 50s and sunny. Uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, Cleveland winters, usually we get lake effect snow because the lake is warm. And then we get those Canadian Canadian uh, cold fronts move through. They pick up snow. They dump us on the east side of Cleveland. For lake effect you know you saw buffalo just had like seven feet a week ago and then of course in christmas time the lake is frozen over so we we just get like drizzly rain so we get a, a white thanksgiving and a, a wet christmas right mike that's pretty much it yep and lucky the wind was blowing the direction it was because that seven feet of snow could have been us right exactly exactly so anyways all right, so it's uh it's not Black Friday. It's I don't know what do they call it, Gray Saturday, but it's a sunny day. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you know what, I, I folks, I, you know we we blow up a lot of myths and cliches on this uh, podcast, but one of the biggest myths is this uh, Black Friday. You know, like you're getting these big deals. Uh, my wife and I went out last night uh, to our uh, club. Uh, country club where they allow us to, you know, they allow you to just bring in a bottle if you want. So we brought this bottle in that she got, this $38 bottle that was marked down to 19 at the grocery store, bottle of, uh, you know, it's a bottle of red blend. And uh, of course, I looked up, we looked up at it on um, drizzly.com and guess how much it was, Mike? 38 20 bucks. marked up, 20 bucks. No, I'm sorry, 19. <laughs> so, it was marked down to what the real price was. So, yeah. But speaking of buyer beware, uh, let's talk a little bit about the synergy between Thanksgiving holidays and running your own little Airbnb and uh, some uh, general tips of what you should be uh, uh, aware of. So, Mike, lead us off with that story you read. Oh, yes. So it's a commercial. Uh, there's an Airbnb commercial that's airing. Not sure if you guys have seen this one yet, but essentially it's Airbnb pitching the idea of starting your own Airbnb rental business. And essentially what they're offering is some kind of consultation, coaching, you know, on getting your first Airbnb up and running. I forget exactly what they call it, but that's what it is. It's, you know, hey, thinking about getting into the Airbnb rental business, we can help. So no, they Airbnb can't. is they can't pitching help. their own product. <laughs> they can't help you. They can't help you, folks. They, 
you know, it's all a scam. Trust me. Um, what your general thoughts on Airbnb? Well, yeah. So it's, it's kind of like those investment gurus who say, Hey, pay me 50 bucks, pay me $300 and I'll show you my system for investing in real estate. You know, I, I'm not a big believer in those systems. I think that you get yourself a mentor and, you know, learn from other people who've done it. And, and that's the way you do it. I don't think you have to pay $300 to learn how to do this stuff. But, you know, I'm seeing Airbnb, Mike, I'm, I'm amazed at the income compared to a yearly or, or you know, multi-year traditional uh, lease type situation. I, I'm just amazed at the difference. And sure, there's some extra labor that goes into it, which, you know, you can talk about that more than I can. But the way that you're leveraging properties uh, with this short-term rental model, you know, I'm seeing triple, quadruple the income that you see from uh, traditional rentals. Right. Well, you've seen, uh, we've been doing that for years, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I watch you do it. I have yet to dip my toe in the water of Airbnb, Mike. I, I'll be honest. I still have all tr traditional rentals and uh, I watch you do it. And I keep looking at my portfolio saying, I, hmm, I wonder if one of my rentals could become an Airbnb. And so far, I haven't pulled the trigger. Well, you know, folks, let me give you my own personal experience with Airbnb. It's, it's kind of like divulging the secret sauce here. First of all, when you talk, talk about Airbnb, lesson number one, don't trust Airbnb. Don't put all your, uh, all your marbles into one basket here with Airbnb. There's VRBO. That's another platform. And there's also, um, there's also other platforms out, out there. Some are good. Some are bad. I mean, if you want to get the inside scoop on that, that's, that's where we charge you. I mean, we, we have a consulting service for people who want to set up their own Airbnb. It's, it's 150 an hour. And trust me, it's worth it. If you're, especially if you're out of the, uh, the Cleveland area, because I don't want to give, give this, these secrets away for free, but I'll give you a little taste test like Mrs. Fields cookies, Mike. So <laughs> right. here's, here's a little Mrs. Fields cookie for you. When you think of Airbnb, that's like thinking of Xerox. Okay. Uh, it used to be, you know, 20, 30 years ago, if you wanted to make a copy, you would say, I'm going to Xerox this. And Airbnb is the same thing. It's a catch-all phrase for, you know, short-term rental, short-term right. furnished rental, right? Okay. Now, when you think of Airbnb, most people think in terms of vacation homes, weekends, you know, especially Thanksgiving. We've had a lot of, we had a surge come in, you know, for four days, you know, People wanted to get together as families, and then that's where Airbnb is a perfect venue where you can get everybody together staying at one house. Uh, maybe they're all not sleeping there, but they certainly can get together for Thanksgiving dinner, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the real key to Airbnb being your, your rental is the phrase short term. And short term could be two months, three months, could be six months, could be somebody in there uh, going to the uh, going to the hospital for surgery, somebody who had a fire damage their house, somebody who's just coming into Cleveland for a couple months, relocating and needs to buy a house. There is a variety of reasons why people want to rent short term and you can charge double if double what you would get for your monthly rent easily if you want to go the short-term route. And you'll be surprised at how occupied those houses are going to be because there is a huge need for short-term rentals. Your thoughts, Mike? Yeah. So, of course, putting my real real estate broker hat on, you know, as I watch that Airbnb commercial, you know, from the company Airbnb and I hear you talk uh, when I put my broker hat on, I think about the all the other ways that there are to get people in your house. Houses. And of course, you know me, Mike, I'm a networker, a relationship sort of marketer. 
And so all my real estate friends out there, all the realtors who listen to us, if you don't have uh, your own Mike Riley in your market where you can uh, network with that person, it, it's such a valuable resource. You, you've got a client who says, well, I, I need to buy, but in the short term, where do I stay? You need to be the broker of knowledge in your market. You know, So you're telling your clients, well, here, call, call these folks. They have short-term rentals. They'll set you up. And then you, know, you continue the home search. Likewise, if you are an owner of Airbnbs, or VRBOs, your short-term rentals, I think that the realtor community in your area is such a valuable resource because these are folks who need your product and don't even know that they need it. You know, they just think, well, you know what? My client comes in, they, they need a rental for a month. They'll figure it out. Well, no, you, you need to tell them where to go and create value by making those connections. Well, I'll give you another example of the incompetence because that's what you're saying for a lot of people. They don't even know this exists. You know, a realtor won't won't even think about, you know, a short term rental. Uh, position your client in this house for a period of time as they go looking for that house to buy. So they're not even thinking about that. But the incompetency among the medical establishment, uh, the Cleveland Clinic, is extraordinary. Hmm. They they do nothing to help people find short-term rentals. Um, we talked to them a couple of years ago uh, before COVID. You know, Lindsay went uh, down, met with some people and told them about how we have these properties in Forest Hill, their first floor uh, master suites, their ranches, they're close to the clinic. And these people basically yawned or patted around the head and say, well, we'll get back to you. Meanwhile... Yeah. People coming in for a heart transplant, people coming in for cancer therapy, whatever, the clinic does nothing to help them find a place to stay. I mean, they'll make hundreds of thousands of dollars on the medical procedures, and you would think they would want to reach, they would want to at least facilitate this. But again, no. And we're getting a lot of our tenants, our short term tenants, coming for, you know, uh, medical treatments. And that's a huge part of our uh, rental market. It's not weekend vacations. It's those two month, one month, two month, three month stays, you know, coming into Cle Cleveland for that specialized care that the Cleveland, the, uh, Cleveland clinic gives. Yeah. It's, it's a shame that uh, establishments like that and more real estate agents and brokers don't take the approach of instead of it's not my problem. They'll figure it out. How can I offer a full package of value? You know, so you're coming here for uh, surgery, let's say, or cancer treatment or whatever. You would think that the clinic would want to be more proactive and make the whole experience easier for the family. You're already dealing with these huge health problems. The last thing you want to be worrying about is where am I going to stay? Where is my family going to stay so that they can be here with me for that month or three weeks, you know, whatever it is. And it's the same thing with uh, real estate agents. Uh, the other big group that I thought of as we were, as I was listening to you talk about this, Mike, is builders. You know, the, a lot of times the builders will have a house that they'll rent out, but they don't have a lot of short-term housing available for people waiting for construction to finish. And of course, new construction still booming. Uh, but, you know, the builders, are, that's the other group that your short-term rental landlord should be networking with. Right. Well, you know what? When you get into, uh, when people start thinking of Airbnb, uh, you're competing with hotels. Right. So when you look at how much to charge, look at what a hotel would charge for a one-bedroom. You know, usually, you know, if it's extended, say, it's going to be around $100 a day, right, for you know, and that's a pretty budget motel. Yeah, uh, that's hotel. Cheap, yeah. So maybe 150 and you got a little kitchenette or something, but that's just one bedroom. So imagine people that are that have a family of, of five, they're going to need at least two bedrooms. So now you're looking at 300 a night, 300 a night times 30, that's nine grand. So now you're not going to necessarily charge 9,000 for the month, but think it gives you a, a, a sense of scale of your revenues because I always use the figure that we have to make triple of what we would have made on a long-term rental in terms of pricing. Okay, so that's that's cookie number one. Everybody got a taste of that. If you want more, you got to pay. 
okay, you got to call us and and we'll and we'll walk you through as as your consultant. Let's let's let, let me dive into cookie number two, which is uh, beware the scamsters that are out there, and um, we've had our few, and they are it's breathtaking the amount of scams that are out there. People will contact you, uh, give you a sob story, buy a in, my dad's going into the clinic and this and that. We had this, we had this case happen a couple months ago where we actually, we got scammed and one of our, our people in the office um, was handling it. And uh, his, his father was Amish. Of course, they don't have credit cards. They don't have, but I'll bring over a, I'll give you wiring instructions, you know, stuff like that. Well, here's what happened. The wiring instructions took three days. Meanwhile, this guy's in our house and still hasn't paid anything. Hmm. And then, of course, when the wire instructions uh, two or three days later came back, uh, wrong number, he goes, oh, whoops, I gave you the wrong account, gave our person an another number, and that took three days, and by that time, he was gone. So basically, he stayed in our house for a week and just played us like, you know, like 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 a drum. And mm -hmm. we later found out that, you know, he, this, this guy had pulled this around town, you know, before. So the number one rule to avoid scamsters is, A, make sure the money is in your account digitally, physically, whatever you want to call it, it is in your account. And number two, because it's a big cookie here, number two, make sure your account is set up so it has, what do they call those, double key codes where nobody could come in and yank your money out. Now, we have our yeah. account set up where whoever writes the check has to get somebody who doesn't have check writing authority to okay that uh, that amount of money going out of the account. And we use that to protect us against embezzling, you know, former employees making a copy of a check, check forgery, um, scamsters. But we've had, Mike, we had DRBO a year ago, some Karen type rented from us, stayed there 29 days out of her 30 day stay and saw a mouse freaked out and used that as a pretext what wanting to get her whole uh refund back she was there for 29 days literally and she wanted all her money back three thousand dollars and vrbo actually tried to go into our account and yank it out wow and guess what they couldn't because our accounts were locked tight. And then they called us and they said, well, you either give this lady her money back or we'll drop you. What do you think my response was? Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, good. Thank you. Drop us, please. Drop it. I don't want to, I don't want to get your, your, uh, your Karen type uh, tenants uh, in, in our properties. Your thoughts, Mike? Hey, let's stop here. We got to pay some bills. 30 seconds and we'll be back. If you've been listening to this podcast, then you understand or should understand the pitfalls of investing in Cleveland real estate. Say you're looking for an investment property to rent. And these are the things that could happen and often do. You overpay for a house and it's in the ghetto. Then you find that it's a money pit with endless surprise repairs. Your hapless property manager, who may be the brother-in-law of the realtor, gets a tenant who after three months stops paying the rent. Then the toilet explodes and you have nobody to repair it because guess what? The property manager is not answering the phone. Yep, that's the ugly side of the Cleveland real estate market. But we have a solution. Buy one of our properties. It's been inspected. It's been vetted. It's in a rock solid part of town. It comes with a gold star tenant paying top dollar rent. And we manage it. Call us at 216-371-8160 if you're interested.
Well, I can't argue with that at all. You know, uh, go back and listen to our previous podcast about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, the the customer is not always right. Remember that that one? Oh well, yeah, I have a couple like that. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, sometimes the customer is an idiot. Sometimes the customer is a, is a pathological liar. Sometimes yeah. the customer is a thief. So yeah, yeah, don't. And, and you know what, folks, if you have an Airbnb, believe me, those scented candles and little soaps in the basket, you know, with the with the little fluffy towels and everything, that's not going to make any difference to those to those uh, scamsters or thieves out there that prey on these little, you know, one stop shop uh, mom and pop Airbnbs. And that's where Airbnb and VRBO do not give a shit about you. Trust me. You know, yeah. they're more concerned. They will give away the store to a customer, to your tenant. They will yank money out at the slightest pretext. And we've seen that over and over again, which is why we do not rely on Airbnb. And as far as them helping you set up your Airbnb, yeah, you'll get somebody who's 21 years old who just got out of college with an English degree helping you with that they're not and they're, they're not going to give you a, right. yeah and they're following a script mike you know they're not they don't have the real world experience like this kind of stuff this is you think airbnb is going to tell you about the scammers of course not they don't even want you to be thinking about that right they want you to have this sort of uh hallmark lifetime television series you know where it's kind of what do they call that gauzy little uh, yeah, the rose lens. rose tinted glasses. Rose view tinted of glass, the, that's right. Little yeah. candles, and and then you see everybody's you know a clean clean cut, you know professional people there. No, you're gonna get you're gonna get some real bums who may want to rent from you. And uh, Airbnb is not going to filter them out. In fact, what we've done with one of our uh, VAs, our virtual assistants in the Philippines. Uh, we've tasked them to identify people who want to rent from us, uh, their LinkedIn profile, a uh, website where they work work at, to eliminate the potential of having any uh, scamsters call. Yeah. Because if somebody is legitimately and they, they're, they're co- contacting us through Airbnb, they've gone to our website, they've seen what we're about and they want to rent from us, they're more than happy to give you their LinkedIn profile, because it validates on from their perspective that this is a, you know, first class professional operation when we're asking them to give us their bona fides. Yeah, it's amazing how much you can find out about someone just by going online and look at that, looking at those profiles. If you're an employer and you're not checking out people's Instagram, Facebook pages, you know, you're missing such a great source of information to really find out who you're talking to. Exactly. So look at folks, when, if you want to take the jump into short term um, rentals, it is a it is a good opportunity, but there's a lot you need to know. And here's here's the last thought I want to give in terms of uh, Airbnb. There are certain. First of all, professional people do not want to rent a short term house in the ghetto. OK. That's that's number one. They I've had we we have a couple of properties in in Forest Hill, which are on the East Cleveland side in East Cleveland. uh, Huge parts of East Cleveland is a ghetto down in the uh, down the hill. I mean, it is it's in the 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 whole city's in the is in the stages of of basically imploding uh, and being taken over by other municipalities. But. Up on the hill, there is a sliver of East Cleveland, Forest Hill, which is first class. You know, imagine, you know, Brooklyn. There were parts of Brooklyn that were great, and there was parts of Brooklyn which were not so great. And that's what East Cleveland is. But people, when they, when uh, we've had people contact us and say, oh, my God, I just realized that I booked my Airbnb in uh, your house in East Cleveland. And friends of mine told me that's a ghetto. People are not going to rent a house if it's in a sketchy neighborhood right mike it's all about that local nuance you know you look at a zip code you look at a city 
it's not it's not as simple as that and that's why you need to deal with an expert right and so before you uh get your pie in the sky your pumpkin pie in the sky (laughs) uh you know for your property be very careful about where you're buying your property to set it up as your short-term rental it should be close to a hot uh you know first-rate hospital that's number one in a safe neighborhood um, you can always determine if it's in a good neighborhood or bad. How many Starbucks coffee places are there versus how many dollar stores? Okay, that's usually a good indicator of the uh, of the, um, the the quality of the neighborhood that you're buying in. So, what other just general thoughts, Mike, about short term rental? Well, you know, I think that you you know you've given some good examples of where to where your location is. And of course, the three most important things in real estate, location, 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 Uh, some other ideas uh, apart from hospitals, you know, when you look at uh, where yours are located, you know, you're, you're close to businesses, you're close to the downtown area, you're close to the university, uh, uh, various universities right there on university circle. Uh, Other considerations are, you know, places where people might uh, want to do a short-term rental for a getaway. Remember during COVID, Mike, you had oh, people huge. coming in from New York City who just wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle, the uh, densely packed populated areas. So I think as you're looking at lo- locations, you have to ask yourself, would someone want to come here short-term and, and, and why? You better be able to support the why uh, and I think, you know, I, and I don't want to give away too much of your formula, but test <laughs> marketing, you know, I, this is just something as simple as test marketing. I've heard you talk about this where you say, you know what, we'll throw a listing out there, you know, on various platforms or, or one platform just to see, you know, what kind of reaction we, we get from it. So I think that uh, the idea of test marketing is something that you really should ask Mike Riley to explain to you in more de- detail. Right. I think, um, Realistic. Let's get to, uh, you know, this is kind of a semi infomercial because we're pitching our consulting. Folks, you can look at, you can go on RileyProperties.com, R E I L L Y, RileyProperties.com, and you can see what we're doing there. Our average home, let's say that's worth $150,000, we're averaging our revenues are going to be around 30000 so that's 20% cap rate. I mean, uh, right, Mike? Uh, do the cap yeah, rate. Yeah, I mean, that's like. that's at least double what you would get by doing a traditional rental. That's at least double. Right. So you're talking about $30,000 gross revenues on a $150,000 house, okay? Um, now, you're going to need... If you want to set this up, you're going to need somebody like us as your consultants. And I would factor when it's all said and done, you're probably going to lay out between $1,000 and $2,000 in consulting fees. The front end getting you set up and then ongoing helping you uh, read the market, negotiate rates, where to go, et cetera, et cetera. That and in setting up your back office, your virtual assistants who can handle the utilities, how to hire a cleaning person, um, the lawn care, should you have the the tenant pick up the lawn, the snow shoveling, the whole nine yards. There are all these little twists and turns that you have to understand about the short-term rental market. And that's the consulting that we offer at RileyProperties.com. Of course, if you want to buy a house in Cleveland, investment property, You've got Mike Ferrante, Century 21. Right, Mike? That's right, 21mike.com. Okay, there we go. So we're a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of info, infomercial here. But but it is a good opportunity if you're willing to be smart and do and do your homework to make money. And one of the last pieces of encouragement I can give people is that ironically, for short-term rentals. The damage to your house is minimal compared to somebody who's there for a year. I mean, I've seen people, and I've talked about this in early podcasts, they'll have somebody there for two years at $1,500 a month plus utilities. So 
less their property taxes and insurance and repairs. So you got somebody at 15. So what are you getting? 18,000 versus 36,000 on the short term. So they're making 18,000 yep. less taxes and repairs, et cetera. And they'll have to spend 10 grand when they move out repainting the house. I mean, it's like they made no money after all that on, on long term. But with short term, most of the, with professional people's people in there, they're never there half the time. They're just, you know, they're just uh, they're working all the time uh, visiting yeah. nurses. Um, you think of the wear and tear of a hotel room. Like when you stay at a hotel room, it's not like you're there, you know, beating the place up. Uh, other than sleeping there, most people aren't in their hotel hotel room it's it's that kind of wear and tear versus the wear and tear you get from someone living in a house full time for one or more years right and you know the last thing i keep here's another little crumb from the table folks the last thing and the one of the most important things is you need a website for your property because what happens is a lot of times like with airbnb or vrbo They'll actually go in, they'll see our house, and then they'll locate us on the website. And then we can deal with them one-on-one, -on -one, which is a lot better. Uh, it's a lot cleaner. We can vet them, they can vet us. It's not necessarily about you know saving money on, on the Airbnb fee, which I'm more than happy to pay for, Airbnb people. I got no problem paying the commission as long as I'm getting something tangible for it. So Airbnb, in terms of generating leads, is fine. They do a shitty job of vetting uh, people. And, uh, you know, I got so sort of sidetracked, Mike, but I was talking about our VAs and how we background check on the LinkedIn profile. We actually also uh, check some of these people out to see if they've been giving uh, ripping hosts, Airbnb hosts online. I saw one lady who had just, had stayed at three places and gave them one star each. I mean, she was a chronic complainer. And uh, we called her up and basically told her, you know what, we're not renting to you. I just saw how you've been ripping people left and right. And uh, she was stunned. And thank God we didn't rent for her because she could have tanked us as well. So, you know, maintain how to maintain your reputation on social media, you know, with your place, because people are going to want to vet you, your website, maybe a video, maybe a TikTok. There's a lot of things you need to do that you need to know about. And Airbnb is not going to tell you these things. So final thoughts, Mike, and then we'll wrap well, this I think up. You know, I think that last point you made quite possibly was the most important because we have become a society that buys things online. And when you buy online, what's the first thing you do? You read the reviews. So building that online reputation is so important. The reviews are so important. And I can tell you that having a uh, like a standalone website where people can look at you, your history, your product, it, it legitimizes you to an extent that your average Airbnb or VRBO host doesn't have. It, you know, there's just a certain air of legitimacy when you have a website like like Riley Properties. And I'm telling you, people look at it, you know, it, ask yourself, last time you bought something online, what did you do? People are going to behave the same way that you do. You read the reviews. Right. Exactly. So look at folks, there's a lot out there. There is a lot out there that you need to know before you jump into the uh, short term rental market. And we're here to help. We're here to act as your consultant, so you know keep that in mind. And also, uh, one more pump to Mike. If you're looking to buy an uh, investment property or a home in Cleveland, these are the guys to go to. No bullshit. I mean, they're going to speak plainly to you. Mike, listen, uh, we got one more podcast to do, and then we got to get ready for the big Michigan Ohio State game. And folks, we will pick. We'll see you uh, next week with uh, December heat check. All right. Thanks, Mike. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Cleveland Real Estate Investor Podcast with Mike Riley. Please add our show or follow us on Spotify, Overcast, Apple Podcast, or Spotify. Leave a like or comment on the video. All engagement is appreciated. Subscribe to us on YouTube as well for video content coming soon. 
For any Cleveland listeners or Cleveland Browns fans, you can check out our other podcast, Cleveland Browns Anonymous, for our weekly group therapy session. This is also on all the same platforms as the Cleveland Real Estate Investor.